So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for inviting me. I've been, I've been asked to talk about Brexit, borders and belongings. And as a, a parish minister, I am nevertheless, first of all, an exegete. I will take a short time for every single word of the theme. And as I am Italian, I will do it in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> belongings. <laughs> belongings, knowing who we are, is important for our lives, we know. And our identity has something to do with different kinds of belongings. We belong to our people, whoever it is. It has to do more with our personal, familiar and social history than with the country that is issued on our passport. It has to do with our religion, with our religious history. I really believe that my spiritual life cannot consist only of personal, intimate moments, who are of course important, but my spiritual life also needs to believe in congregational mo moments, in somehow organized rituals where my religious belonging is confronted and confirmed but my faith companions. My belongings has to do with our being part of a people to be intended about, but in more in a cultural <clears throat> way than in a political one. As a personal example, being an Italian from northwestern Alpine region as I am, well, talking about the way of thinking, the way of interacting, I have more in common with a Swiss, or with a southern French man, than with a man from Sardinia or Sicily, which are Italian just like as I am. Borders. When I belong to something, I cannot belong to something else which is completely different. It is simply logical. Then borders make sense. There must be a border between me and the rest of the world. There must be wider borders between my society and different societies, between my people and other peoples, between my religion, so the way I live my faith and different ones. <coughs> there must be borders and trying to avoid borders creates a problematic identity fondue <laughs> in which every individual is simply melted and becomes something different which doesn't make sense. I have no problems with borders. I need, to, I need borders to know who I am and what I belong to. The question is about, about the quality of borders. What are borders? There are many possible ways to see and understand them, but in the end there are actually only two ways to describe borders. Borders can be walls or meeting places. I have no problems with borders because I see them as meeting places. I need borders because there are places where I can meet different identities. I can share with them, but I do not have the necessity to immediately mix my identity with others, other ones I meet. Actually, I'm here, I've been invited here because there is a recognized border between us. I am, I've been invited here because I can bring a different point of view, which is not the right one. Well, probably yes, but... <laughs> and my point of view is based on my history, on my society, the society I live in, on my faith too. In few words, my point of view comes from my identity, which is 
on the other side of the border from the point of view of the majority of the people who are here. But I am here because we do not want that our borders turn out into walls. I am here because we all, we all recognize that meeting at the border between us is a wonderful occasion of sharing different ideas, different experiences, different feelings. God bless these kind of borders. And Brexit. I can remember when I read what had happened. I was on holiday. And when I looked at the news, I was absolutely shocked. Why? Which is probably the same question that came to mind to many of you too. There are many reasons for my astonishment. One is absolutely personal. I have always felt at home in Great Britain. I came to this country many times for several reasons. I took part to meeting and church assemblies sent by my Italian church who wanted to keep this link. And with my family, I, I come as often as I can for tourism, enjoying the land and the people from Cornwall to Scotland. And I never understood and I do not understood, understand myself as a stranger here on the British Isles. But after the Brexit, after the referendum day, I must admit that at least for someone, this should be the way I feel, a stranger. We need borders, but it was clear that at least for someone, borders must be walls, real and concrete walls. And what have I perceived as an Italian Protestant about Brexit? Of course, an important part of my personal history has to do with my faith history, and so with the history of my church, the Waldensian Church, where I am minister. The Waldensian Church is the United Reformed and Methodist Church in Italy, and it is a small minority church in deeply Roman Catholic country and culture. Being part of a minority is sometimes difficult, sometimes exciting, but in the past it, it could also be extremely dangerous. If there is still nowadays a Protestant church in Italy, whose history goes back to the Reformation and beyond, it is also be due to the help of our church received from Protestant countries in Europe. I would say that the Protestants from the Netherlands, from Switzerland, and above all, England, went over the classical idea of border and sent help to this small Italian church they sympathized with. They acted as if political borders that existed and that they did not want to ignore. But anyway, political borders could not turn into barriers able to stop solidarity and struggle for freedom and justice. In the struggling difficulties that they lived in 17th and in 18th century, the Waldensians knew they could cross the borders. They they were welcomed by brothers and sisters in Christ who were different and find a place for sharing practical and spiritual resources. So international transborder relationships have always been part of my personal and communitarian identity. It is part of my being part being citizen of my country, or somehow citizen of Europe, and at the same time member of my church. It was probably not as strong as the one many of you have suffered, but I was shocked when I read on the news about the Brexit decision. I could simply not understand why this decision was taken, and you are, of course, allowed to tell me, welcome to the club. <laughs> I could not understand how could such a people understand again borders 
as a barrier to all, as a barrier to people, to goods, to ideas, that simply come from a different corner of the world. I was rather shocked by the Brexit decision, so just imagine my shock for what, what happened less than two years later in Italy. The political parties who won the last general election in Italy gained the power because they offered the same, same idea of borders that act as walls, that create a safe area for a never existed Italian identity. They created an intriguing, yes, that's intriguing, but absolutely false idea of Italy as a fortress surrounded by the enemies. First of all, all the terrifying <coughs> Islamic and black migrant, because in this narrative, migrants are always Islamic, even though we know it is not true. And a barrier against the even was European technocrats from Bruxelles, who wants to impose his idea of over-the-border solidarity in the narrative. Nothing new under the sun. This idea of selfish self-sufficiency is simply spreading more quickly and more democratically than I could imagine. It reaches everywhere and every, everybody. And it did, it did not come to an end yet. The new Gilets Jaunes movement in France, among some fair demands they have, is also proposing a France for the French idea. But just for the fact we are here and we take part in this meeting, we believe there must be a role for the churches in this European-wide process just not to talk about what is happening on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. And I'm so glad, so grateful, we are sharing ideas. We are sharing ideas on the way our churches could speak prophetic words to our scared people. My own church has much to do in Italy. Italy is now a country where the lack of hope and a growing sense of in insecurity is leading to a progressive closure of all kinds of border, both physical, political, and mental <coughs> borders. <clears throat> but a very important task we cannot give up is promoting a different idea of borders. We don't want to eliminate them, but we want to say they are different. And we have to promote this uh, different idea of borders in a very practical way. And the first practical way is saying we do not want to stop meeting each other across the borders. We do not want to stop celebrating in the presence of the Lord our different belongings, our blessed Belo different belongings. We do not want to stop crying out loud that as Christians we can only consider the whole humanity as one family, one people loved by God. Thank you.